there will not be peace in their life. Wherever, wherever, wherever they are ganging up, ancient of the day, they call the Santayada, they suit the Likalabo Shanta, they suit her, they get a bow Shanta. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. As smoke is drive away, so drive them away. As what? Mounted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. I decree and I declare as smoke goes away, so shall your enemies scatter. In the name of Jesus, those that declare they are said to be Pharaoh and wicked one, that is what God will turn them to. They will not amount to anything. Their plan will become zero. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, we thank you. Because your word is here and amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I further the Lord, is Sister Rachel is around. Amen. Hallelujah. I declare upon you today that you are returning with testimony. In Jesus' name. Your eyes will behold the recompense of the wicked. That the purpose of God's crowning in your life must fulfill its purpose. Is somebody getting that prayer point? Is our mode of crowning? There's a reason why every king is crowned. So there's a purpose God is crowning us this month. Our path must drop fatness. There must be bountiful harvest. Begin to decree and declare that your glory must be. No matter the gang up, no matter the set up. Every battle of a warrior is confusing noise. Garment rolls with blood. Holy Ghost. Fight for your God. In Jesus' name. Some are fighting for their God, but our God is fighting for us. Your eyes will behold the recompense of the wicked. Your mouth will testify the testimonies. Your ear will hear the testimonies of everyone trusting in the Lord. Because it's a faithful God. Today, we're speaking on a topic anointing to reign. Today's an anointing service, and in this month of crani, that the Lord has spoken expressly to us. In Psalm 65, verse 11, that He crowned the year. With was with his goodness and our part drop fatness. He 
He crammed the year with his goodness. Our part drop fatness. But the bountiful harvest, bountiful turnover, doing only what he can do. What the Lord has spoken is manifesting. When this declaration started just this month, whether in the VG or within the first Sunday of this month, I said, by the reason, I said, we are all preparing for Thanksgiving now, which is the end of year Thanksgiving, first Sunday of December. I said, but by the reason of what God will be doing, some of us will be thanking God before the December Thanksgiving. How many of us remember that statement? Last Sunday, we see some persons came. From came, commit buttons to come and what? Thank God. To come and thank God. Even before the one we are preparing for for next month. There's something God has for you to not pass you by. As the anointing is coming upon you today, you are anointed to reign. To manifest the purpose for which you are being crowned this month. And this reign is not stopping for this month. It will keep manifesting in your life. In the name of Jesus. Just be seated. Let's hit some things for about 30 minutes before we begin to pray. Anointing to reign. Hallelujah. Anointing to reign is the topic of today's message. And today is an anointing service. We symbolically want to put an oil upon you. I want to put oil upon you. And there's an anchor scripture for today's ministration. The test is taken from first somewhere. So turn your Bible to first somewhere. That will be bringing some inspiration to you. First somewhere chapter 10. We are taking it from verse 1 to verse 6. First Samuel 10, 1 to 6 is the anchor scripture. I hope you are not forgotten that the word of God has come unto us. That the month of November in this 2019 is our month of what? Cramming. A lot of teachings have rolled out. And I've told us before now, one of the Sundays, that once an individual is crowned, automatically there's a translation. Hallelujah. You are no longer the same. Some things have translated. Your status have changed. Your capacity have changed. Change. And today, that fresh oil is coming upon us. If there be any force, any authority, any stronghold, saying your cranny will not speak glory, say you will not reign with your cranny, the anointing will break the yoke. Can I hear a sounding amen? And anyone hearing the sound of my voice in any part of the earth, there's no distance. In the rest of their spirit. Because I've had people calling as we are declaring. Whether we are through the phone or from their TV set or wherever. That they touch it and they tapped into it. They started sharing the same testimony. Hallelujah. Because I haven't declared words today upon you here. I will also say now nah, this oil I release it Lord. To the people connected home and abroad. You know, we are hearing testimony of people who are who watching what? In the media, one connection or the other. That's to tell you, God transcends every barrier. Every barrier. Because you go nowhere if you are not taking charge in the rest of the spirit. 
And it's the oil, the anointing that will make you to take charge. Anointing to reign. The oil of God upon a man's life can be seen as the anointing. If you look at They have chosen him to not be ruling over the people, to be crowned as a king over Israel. Be crowned. The word of God have gone forth that Saul have he not chosen to be crowned as a king over Israel. So the Lord now said to Samuel, now go. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? That is the oil. When the oil carried the power of God, carried his, the presence of God is poured. It's a symbol of what God's word anointing. So as oil is touching you today, it's a symbol of God's anointing upon you. Can somebody say, I hear as oil is released into the realms of the spirit, anyone who taps it far and near is tapping into a realm of anointing. Anointing to reign. Anointing to manifest the purpose of the crowning. Anointing to take over one's inheritance. Anointing to be captain and a leader. If you look at that word, it says, is it not because the Lord has chosen you so that you will be what? Captain over his inheritance? You that should be a captain over inheritance. You can't be a beggar. You can't be the needy. That's why if you are in need today, tomorrow you will not be in need. That is why God brought you here. In the La Post is anointing that break yoke. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So the spirit of God upon a man can also be the anointing. Because this oil is carrying the spirit. That's why it's symbolized. It's just a symbol. So when the spirit of God is in oppression in your life, what did I say? When the spirit of God is in oppression in your life, that is what it means that the oil of God is upon you. That the anointing of God is upon you. If you look at verse 6, because I don't want to bombard you with too much verse this time, let's concentrate on this for somewhere. If you look at verse 6, he said, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy unto them, and shall be turned into another man. Say not to, to Saul, that the Spirit of God will, what, will come upon thee, and you now begin to prophesy. Because just the Spirit of God coming upon you, you are now another man. That's why I say, it's not a barrier. As we release the Holy Ghost from here today, it's going to affect people in every part of the age, in every part of the world. Don't talk of you that is here. Holy Spirit, something is burning on my forehead. I see the Lord want to drop something in somebody's head today that will make you stand out. You must read, no? Can you tap your two legs on this ground? Let the earth hear it. Say, I must read. My cranny must manifest in the name 
of Jesus. Are there people who are ready to be stubborn in the spirit? Ready to be rugged? You have had time with that number. When, God, when Jesus said to John the Baptist in John 11, 12, he said from the days of John the Baptist until now. I remember I asked you when it's now. I said now is what? The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So, to love God in your life be the anointing. So once they are in operation in your life, then you are ready to reign. Because those are the first that will prepare you to manifest the glory for the purpose for which word you are crowned. Amen. So, this month of crowning, you are already crowned to reign. The reign must speak. Nothing stops it. So, everyone needs a spiritual backup. The purpose of the anointing, the purpose of the oil, is to give you a spiritual word backup. No king's reign without spiritual backup. No organization can fulfill its purpose without spiritual backup. Who said knowledge is not good? Who said technicality, knowing how, is not good? You need to know how to do what you are doing. But you can know the best if there is no backup. Let's just say, maybe nothing is pursuing you. I remember I do tell people, from, I said, there are church you just need to go. You just go to fulfill normal service. Within one hour or one hour, 30 minutes, you are out. You just do it and just do your sign of the cross. And then you go home with your sincere mind. Say, good, fine. Just keep moving. It'll be good. Yes, God will be hearing you. You are serving God. You are with God. God, Christ come, you go to heaven with your sincere mind. You are serving God. I say it's good for people who don't have battle to fight. Oh. Am I talking to somebody? When you don't get battle to fight, it's good. But if there's who is eyeing you, <laughs> praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? If there's who is eyeing you, Or who think you have made one mistake in time past? And it was for you that mistake to ensure you go nowhere. I say it's very good you can be going there if there's no don't have battle to fight. Amen. So that's why everyone needs a spiritual backup for him or her to take his or her place in destiny. So, purpose of anointing. To, one, to take your place in destiny. Same purpose of anointing, right? The anointing. The crown is already upon you. You need the oil, you need the anointing. So, one, the purpose of the anointing is to take your place in what? In destiny. Can somebody shout hallelujah? To take your place in what? In destiny, you need to take your place in destiny. You need to be anointed. See, the, that's why. Let's go back to that uh, first Samuel 10 1. It's the purpose of the anointing to take your place in destiny because there is an inheritance for you. If you look at that first Samuel 4 1, first Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, it said. He said, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said unto him, I'm reading for Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. And Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, it's not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over inheritance. You know, before you were born, there are inheritance for you. I once asked a question many years back. If some of you, this one is about, I think we are seeing a Wesu, if you remember. When I was teaching some teacher, I said, there's a job for you, there's a work for you. 
as I was teaching with inspiration, I now ask the church, which one comes first? The man or the woman God is sending to the edge or the work he's going to do on edge? Remember I taught it and I said the work comes first. The work you are going to do is already sent forth. Everything God did is a message. He has already created the earth, covered the earth, the, the trees, the living things, and every other thing prepared. The garden set before Adam and Eve were what? Created. The inheritance is already there. You have to launch your guy, Drex. To walk the work God wants you to do. Say, so don't confess. So there's an inheritance for you. So you need the anointing to take your place in destiny. You need the backup to take your place. In destiny. You see that brother on this fire today. Was it not last Sunday or, the, the, or some Sundays back? Not last Sunday. Some Sundays back when he testified. When I not even declared upon him that just as you were just as you were careful to the prophecy that was given to you, that there, there are a set up that want to take up what your job. She came, he, he analyzed what was told to him two years ago, and I have been carefully holding that word. And a lot of people in, in have in different places tried. With one thing or the other, but I keep remembering that word. There are even some people, is it from Akura or some other place, they mentioned some lady. We were never even sort of, yeah, can, you, can you give us the number? Give Licky things out. Shun all of them. But after two years, he says, his boss called him. I said, I've been watching you. If you recall that day, I now came and said to him that they have tried physically. They are not able. That now, don't think they have what? Giving up. They want to now try spiritually. I mean, of course, I witness. It was that same week. Hallelujah. Just within a week, he now called me. Say, look at the mess he's into. Because of the simple mind. He wants to help somebody. It was a real battle. Meditating and praying. I found out that the man is so confident of what he trusts on. Of the court he belongs to. So confident of it. That he's, that, he, that he's already seated here. They are going to pay me whether 80 or 120. They are going to stay four months before I leave. When you see somebody who, with sincerity, that wanted, he considered you, wanted to help you. Now, nah, the owner said, no way, no way. He has returned all your money to you. You don't even care. That is a cultic mind. But I told my son, Ernest, hold your peace. I'm going to frustrate what he trusts on. So frustrate what he trusts on. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take my time on that. That's why after all, he now became somebody who was crying to you, who came to beg you, who brought people. Who to step? It's the same you was not the one went to even report him in the police station. Now pursuing him with what? With police over nothing. Are you are not even listening to him any longer? How come suddenly you now turn over and become an advisor to him again? Is somebody with me? You now turn over to become what? Advisor to him. You see that your church. So what connect church to this one now? Are they doing the church in that place where the business is? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So you need the anointing. You need to hide under a grace. Hide under anointing. 
Because even with your sincere mind, open heart, your good work, people can what? Turn you down. Not the grace of God. That, <laughs> and, and that's all dealing that. I found that you already have to want to mess up his job. That's why I say relax. God will correct this thing that I've gone wrong. Because, correct this thing that I've gone wrong. In his own power. In his own grace. I just give God all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? You must possess your possession. That's why in Acts chapter 26 verse 18. You see what Paul said to, in that place. In Acts 26, 18. Because there's an inheritance for you. That you must take over. He said to open the eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sin. And inheritance among them. Which are sanctified by faith that is in him. You must inherit your inheritance. Because they are for you. The oil will push you there. The Spirit of God will push you there. Anything working against it, Holy Ghost, fire. Push you there. By fire, by force. Glory to God. You look at the following verse. Which is the number two point now. To recover everything that is lost. Recovering of what? Everything that is what? That is lost. In that first Samuel chapter 10. Look at verse 2. Samuel having poured the oil upon him. In verse 2 he said to him. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by the axes, which thou wentest to seek to are found. Are found. And lo, okay, let me take that again. Verse 2. He said, When thou art departed from me today, he said, Then thou shalt find two men by Rachel Sipokas in the border of Benjamin at Zexa. And they will say unto thee, they will say unto thee, the axes which thou wentest to seek are found. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Anointing. To recover everything that is what? Lost. The ass which thou wentest to seek are what? Are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the axes, and so as for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? So, you see the revelation in that verse 2, after the oil, there was a, a recovering. Hallelujah. There was what? A recovering of things that are lost. The purpose of the anointing for you to reign is to enhance you recover things that you have what lost things you have lose in time past whether by you or by your generational parents recovering of destiny this where scripture like isaiah 58 verse 12 comes into play they that will be of thee they will build the old waste places they will be repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the path of dwelling. They will lay foundation for many generations. Because you are out to recover every loss in your lineage. Is somebody saying amen to that? Recovering every loss in your lineage. Some of you sitting here now, you can look at your dad, look at your mom. With all the effort my parents put in, they are not where they are supposed to be. But there's nothing they can do again now. You, you, you yourself, you, you are a witness to that. Praise the Lord. But there's something you can do. Can, is somebody understanding me? There's something you can do to recover your own inheritance and recover their own word inheritance. That's why in Joel, 
it, it makes us to understand about recovering of what? The wasted year. So, you will recover what is lost. That's why the oil is touching you. So that as the oil touch you today, be prophesying upon yourself. Saying, my father, my maker, I am recovering everything that has been lost. You are not negotiating with the devil. You are not pleading with him. You are putting him where he belongs. You are not paying any ransom. Every ransom has been what? Paid! For you to declare your authority. Take your place. Take your place. In Proverbs 30, 30, it says, The lion is the strongest beast in the forest. It does not turn away from any. Does it? So, it was recovering of destiny. Look at the third point. To bring divine direction. See, on that verse by verse of this first Samuel 10, in this third point, it brings divine direction. You can't be carrying the oil of God upon your life. The Holy Ghost, because I told you, the oil of God upon you, that is the anointing. The Spirit of God in your life, that is the anointing. You can't be carry, you can't be a carrier of the Holy Ghost, and you are not divinely led. Divine direction. You order yourself. And those we are stage by stage. I don't think King Saul understands this revelation. If he have understood it, he will not have delayed at the cost of time. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. He said, Then thou shalt go on forward from things, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel. One carrying three keys, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. See, see now, from that verse 2, there's already a divine leading because of the oil. They say you just still keep leading, you can still keep going. The same anointing will still keep on leading you. It will not even lead you. You will come across three men carrying loaves of bread and carrying some other things. Hallelujah. Because he's now under the influence and the leading of the anointing. And who are the people he's going to meet? He said three men. Where are they going? They are going to Bethel, a place to worship God. That is, you are not divinely directed to meet with people who are carrying grace and favor, who have connectivity with God, whose good things flows from. Last on Toro Bonea. If you say the oil of God is in your life, the oil of God is in your life, and you are still dwelling in error, dwelling with people who walk contrary to God's purpose. Check what is leading you. Hallelujah. Check what's leading you. Because if you were there before and the oil of God come upon your life, it leads you out of that place. One of our brothers testified how he grew up with sickness. How never, never, never thought he would survive. And how God took over the whole thing. And at the long run, you get to South Africa, how he encountered God. That today, people who knew him before, because when the oil of God is upon you, you become another man. Those who know you before know that you have changed. Am I talking to somebody? The evidence will be there. You are transformed. It now leaves you. He was in South Africa praying for the liberation. When God was showing him concerning his family and the liberation battle to be fought, he said that he was praying. Lord, now saying, Go and meet my son, Apostle Julius. Because there's something God wants to use him to do in his foundation. And that is my calling as an apostle of liberation. So God will not be leading you. 
You are now under divine direction. So you need to ask yourself today, is it Holy Spirit that is leading me? Or I'm still the one leading myself? Or it's my emotion? Or it's my feeling? Or it's my thinking? Or one of you? Ask yourself. Because there is, God has dropped some things out. You must recover your destiny. The death that kill your father early will not kill you. The poverty that enter your family before cannot lay hold of you. Marriage no lasting that be rampart in your lineage cannot happen in your life. Whatsoever that be stolen, you are recovering then. Can somebody stand up and say amen? amen. God lead you. Marado Lokoto. That's why I had many amazing testimonies that people bring forth here. Number four, it draws favor. The oil draws favor into your life. Hallelujah. It draws favor. You can't be liberated. You can't be carrying anointing. I'm carrying the Holy Spirit and I'm beginning to draw favor. We had another brother testifying today. A badge. A job he just started. Amen. And now, they just said, it's, just, it's less than a month that he testified about the job. Just about uh, two Sundays or there about. Last Sunday. Amen. Just a week. And now they just say, there's a special training. And you are the one going. You'll be chosen. Yeah. Can somebody say me to this? Yeah. Wherever you are, chosen for favor, chosen for elevation, chosen for something good. In the name of Jesus. You say, and that is a very special cause. I was ever delighted to be exposed to. Just not giving easily. That's what anointing can do. You can't be anointed under this place. Change your name. You are liberated. You now need to dedicate the new name unto the God Almighty. Angels have taken over. Taken over. It's from glory to glory. It draws favor. So I'm, I'm talking of point four, which is also in verse four. Can we look at verse four together now? It is said four somewhere. And they will salute thee. That is the three people that were going to better with all those gifts in their hand. To seek God. He said, they were, the word of God came unto Sam, unto the uh, son. Huh? He said, they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shall receive of their hands. Can somebody say favor? favor. They saluted him. Because what did they see? They saw the oil. They saw the anointing. Anywhere you go, all they will be seeing in you is the oil. Is the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Sing. And favor will be following you. Following your going out. Following your come in. Your path will be dropping fatness. Your will will be dropping oil. That's overflow. Path. So that's why I understand that Psalm 65, 11 in every translation. NNT gave the clear picture. Bountiful harvest. Is somebody excited to say next Sunday, Lord, I'm coming to you with a bountiful harvest you have blessed me with all the year. To give unto you. Because it's a covenant, it's a grace. Abba Father. Lasso Toro Bonea. Part with one. Draw fatness. Keep drawing favor. Let's move to the fifth point. Number five. It connects you to higher place. Of authority. When the oil is upon your head, anointing to reign will be connecting you to a higher place of authority. Anointing. Praise the Lord. Connect you to a higher place of war. Authority, anointing. Holy Spirit. Can you somebody look at me? Who is me? 
if not the grace of God. Can you tell me who, who did I know that is connecting me? If not God, out of nothing. Out of nothing. So God is out to connect you. Where you are going, eyes have not seen it. Ear have not heard it. Neither had anyone imagined it. Just open up to God. It connects you to a higher place of authority. And that's why in verse 5, 1 Samuel 10, 5, he said, After thou hast come to the he of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it needs come to pass when you had come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from high places. Hallelujah. God will bring people from high places to start meeting you where you are. Just as I am now, where I am, people from high places come to meet me. This is what anointing can do. This is what oil can do. Jesus, not to take us play. You need to know that he's not playing with you. So let your heart be open unto him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say so you meet with people coming down from high places. Sastry, tablets, pipes, halves before them, and they shall prophesy. So, when the oil is upon you, you meet with people from high places after today because you are anointed to reign, to manifest your crown. You begin to meet with people in high places. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Anywhere you are hearing the sound of my voice, can I hear your amen? Because the anointing will connect you to high places. The final verse six, which is the last, the sixth point. No, not the last, the sixth point. You are now the one in charge. Hallelujah. Your destiny is now in your head. You are the one in charge. Look at verse 6. That's why I said, if Saul have gotten this sixth revelation, he will not derail. He will not have derailed. Verse 6 says, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be, and thou shalt be torn into another man. Connecting it to people from high places. The Lord divinely ordered his steps. Now having contact with high ranking people and the same grace now flows to his life. The man from the presence of God prophesying. He said, you saw also Israel of God will not rest upon you, not in its fullness. And you, they will be prophesying, and you also will also be word prophesying. Show me your friend. Tell you whom you are. So those, these are now one, his friend. Best of the same feather flows together. Level have changed. You need to know whom you are. What God is making out of you. That's why in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and verse 6, he said, I want to make them a people of prince and king. I want to make them a nation. So know what God wants to make out of you. And yield yourself to it. The oil is upon you. And it's coming to you again today afresh. So don't toy with the grace of God upon your life. Don't toy with your salvation. 
Don't toy with what God has invested in you. Hallelujah. Don't toy with his gifts. Let me read Ephesians, 5, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 6. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, 5 to 6. Five, let me take it from 5 to 8. Ephesians 2, 5 to 8. He said, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is our new position. Our new position. So don't toy with your Christianity. Don't toy with, don't play hanky packing with the treasures of God in your life. God is taking you from somewhere and is taking you to somewhere. This was what Paul missed. He didn't understand this. He toyed with the grace, his salvation, and the upliftment that God brought to his life. We are now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kingdom towards us through Christ Jesus. His exceeding riches. The inheritance that are locked up is going to manifest through us to the glory of God. Then verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. When you recognize this, you'll be humbled. You'll be careful serving God. You'll be careful obeying. This was what Paul didn't recognize. Saul didn't recognize. I'm talking of Saul, the king, he didn't recognize. So there was no humility. He was no longer obedient. He was no longer careful with instructions and covenants. We are going to pray today because the crown is upon us. The oil is coming upon us. Anything that will make us to delay, make us not to be obedient, make us to dip from the covenant that is taking us from one place to another, that joke must be broken. None of us will end like Saul. Can you stand up and say amen? amen. We are reaching our destination. We are getting to where we are going. Because the time came, even when Samuel was still lamenting over Saul because of one disobedience. You see that in First King, in First Samuel 16, 1. In First Samuel 16, verse 1, Samuel was still lamenting with all the chains of obedience that Saul were bringing forth. What brought Saul down? Is obedient. The anointing was upon him to reign. To reign. He was not sensitive to those instructions I just brought out. But grace is upon us today to be sensitive to them. Even when he derailed, Saul was not still lamenting. Again and again, disobedient upon disobedient. But a time came. God was fed up. Is there anyone here that have derailed, that have disobeyed? To God be the glory that God is not fed up concerning you yet. All you need is to surrender to God because my heart desire and cry, you must reach your goal. That devil is a liar. You must recover everything you have lost. If somebody say amen, because in 1 Samuel 16, 1, the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? See, I have what? Rejected him from reigning over Israel. So I'm talking to somebody here today. God has not rejected you from reigning. He has only shaken you. He has only done some things to you. For you to return. He still loves you. So you better return. Return fully. Return with all capacity. Return so that you don't to him. He is the owner of your inheritance. He is able to give them to you. When he say yes, 
nothing said no. When he opened, no one can close. When he closes, no one can open. All power belongs to him. Both in heaven and in earth. There's no power anywhere given among men by whom one can be warned, can be saved. Can somebody stand on his feet? Nothing can stop you from reigning. There was no power that could stop Saul. He stopped himself. But my own heart cried declaration upon this oil. As the oil touched you, even you will not stop yourself. You will realize yourself and say, What am I doing? It can even be like a prodigal son and say, Why have I wandered away? What am I doing? Why am I not doing what God wants me to be doing? He's a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant keeping God. Brother Badebo, God bless you. Amen. Between you and I and some minister, we know the tithe you grudge. As we are still giving thanks to God for the tithe. He will know again how much he brought. He said he wants to support what? The crusade. So look at what Brother Badebo brought to support the crusade. Okay. As we are still preparing for the crusade, he called me again and said, Is he laying his heart to do something else? It's okay. Pastor, will you be in the church tomorrow morning? I said, No, I'll not be in church that time. And by the next day, we are leaving for crusade. It's okay. I said, The best you can do now is send to my account so that we'll be able to ward, use it over there. That I told the pastors. We prayed for him. And we returned from the crusade. Hallelujah. Look at how God. So, Brangmadebo, so you and God now, who is helping each other? I want to hear from you, sir. <laughs> so, so you know some, some places where you do something, you think you are what? You are helping God. <laughs> we have each other. That devil is a liar. When God lets things in your heart, do it. That's why just as Ajao is also coming now, it may even be it's not the people God used for that last one, he will also use again in this one. You see, that's why I don't crack my head over things. He knows who to use by time, by time. Is somebody hearing me? But don't hurt in your heart when he tell you do this thing. Because you don't know what he wants to what? Do. Don't know. Don't know. That's why he's God. Something man. Who say you not recover? Who say yoke of poverty will not be broken? Who say you not get to where you are going? Let me have the oil. Here. Ministers, come forward. Three of you come forward. Because as this oil touch you, you begin to profess. I hope you noted those six points. And the final seven one was that what disobedient that ruined Saul cannot work. Disconnected from the covenant cannot. It's a settled case. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost. As I'm declaring that, the Lord said, My son, I'm ready to release fresh oil upon them. God is already ready, waiting for us, waiting for you. Your, your testimony will multiply more than ever before. Lord, I thank you. By grace, I will say, Least any man should boast. It's your handwork, Lord. And we are sent for a purpose. You will use us to fulfill that purpose. Whether in our family, in our villages, in our town, in our nation, in our country, in the whole earth, Lord, we will not fail in any area. 
as this all year come upon us, none of us will fail. Amen. Will be a light on top of a hill that cannot be hidden. Amen. The blessings of God keep speaking in our life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Release the fresh oil. Let your power flow. Thank you, Lord. In this place. Let it flow. Let your healing come. Yes. Let it flow. In this place. You must recover your inheritance. You must recover your inheritance. Yes, Lord. Let my rubber shine. Yeah, let it be going. Let it be going. Yes, you must recover your inheritance. Begin to prophesy upon yourself. Oh, let my rubber to recover of everything that is yours. Begin to pray. release. So I release the Holy Ghost. Because I said the, the anointing is the oil of God upon man's life. That the anointing the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God in a man's life. So there's no barrier to the move of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, far and near, home and abroad, in any part of the world, I release fresh anointing into your life. I release the Holy Ghost into your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, by this release, you are recovering your inheritance. If we inheritance that your forefathers, your lineage are lost in time past, you are recovering them. Through you, many will be blessed. Through you, many doors will be opened. In the name of Jesus, recovering of everything that will be lost. Divine leading will be your portion. Be divinely led. La soto lokoto. That will always draw you into favor. Draw favor to locate you. So shall it be. Divine connection is your portion. Connection to people of high places. Where you are, they'll be locating you. Separating you for elevation. In the name of Jesus, you are anointed to reign. You are not the one in charge. By decree king's reign, by your declaration, people will be ruled. If you are that person, can you turn around and say amen? Wherever you are, 
Yes, Lord. Le pas de le coton. You will decree it in on earth. And it will be established in heaven. You rule over the spirit. You rule over the physical. That's what the anointing can do. Ephesians 1, 3. He said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. We say in Ephesians 2, since just now, that we are now reigning with Christ in what? In heavenly places. It's your turn to reign. Anyone that don't want to rule over them, they are cut off. Because that is God's agenda for you. You must get to where you are going. Disobedience is not your portion. Breaking yourself away from the covenant that will be taking you from one level to another is not your portion. You keep moving in grace. And the more God is doing more for you, the more you are more submissive unto him. Listen to his word. Obey him. So if you obey and serve me, you live your days in prosperity and your years in plenty. Obedient. Grace is upon you. That this all year will lead you in the path of obedience to the word of God. Now when the Holy Ghost inspire you, you will keep following his leading. And so shall it be. In Jesus name. And the church say, and so it is with anyone far and near connected to this declaration in Jesus' name. God bless you.